I've got a contact at, uh, and through that contact I get lots of plugs, mainly the industrial 110 volt sight plugs, sight safety plugs. They, they, they come in that size and they come in that size. And a lot of people remember that they also come in that size. Yeah, but less about this one, the better. That one's a five pin plug, they also come in four pins. But it's not about this type of plug I want to talk about. It's the, the three pin plug. Now when I was a lad, many, many years ago, they weren't like this. Now this is a tiny one. Look how tiny it is compared to that. But they were round pins and uh, an old brass pin construction. That would have been off a radio. But the, the other pin, the other plugs were more like it, uh, a little bit bigger, maybe made of Bakelite. Okay. And what did they go into? Well, they go into our uh, three pin plug socket. This is an old one. It's an old one because you can see straight through that, can't you? Which means that I can take something and I can put it straight in there and touch the live connector. How do I know it's live? Uh, right, in the olden days we had red wire and black wire. Red is live, hot. Red R for right. Left is neutral. Sorry, black is left. So R for right. And that was the earth, and you can see no sleeving on that. This is an old tip off. Right, new, we moved over to the new colour of wiring, which is uh, blue and brown. But there you can take the second letter of each one and say blue, B, L, L for left, brown, B, R, R for right. So that's a useful mnemonic from when you want to wire a plug up, which one goes to the right. So the right being the hot. And like I said, olden days, olden days, no tell. A while ago, you could stick that straight in there without a problem. And a young child could as well stick all sorts in there. And there has been accidents. So we moved on and they invented safety gates. If you look at that, those holes are, those holes are blocked off. Hey, this one's broke. So using the same thing, when you put the large earth pin in, it's longer than the others. You can see that. So that will go in first, and as it goes in, it will lower those gates. I can show you better on this side where it's broken off. So as you put your pin in, Pushes it down and clears those gates. Take your, take your pin out and the plastic thing comes up because of that screw. That's to stop kids just sticking things in. They've got to be intelligent enough to stick something in there first, then stick the fingers in them holes. Little, little brief chat about the, the socket side of it. Again, to cheapen things over the years. Here's a cheaper version. Here's an old version. Much more well constructed. All the uh, holders are thick brass, copper components. Even put big chunks of silver contacts on them. Let's move on. The plug. Yeah. there. Like I said, old style, you can tell that because it's got a flat head 
screw but more than that it's got like quality thumb screw fittings these days they're more like this and if I take that out I'll probably be Even the even the the hold down screw is no iron. Look at that, shocking. The plug's been changed its design over many many years. We have slimline plugs made out of a very cheap plastic, quick pass with the other. That's a part. We've got heavy duty rubber plugs. They take some taking apart well not these because they're, they're meant to come apart but if you take something like a molded on plug in that thick rubber that takes some bashing in fact the best part the best way i've ever seen of these being taken apart is by snobby scrap picker and uh, making plug soup and if you look him up look up plug soup or i can put a link in Shows an easy way, drop them in water, hot water, that softens the plastic and then you can pull these out like pulling teeth. There's been other changes, look at it like this. For people who's, uh, who hasn't got any grip, arthritis, you know, they've got little handles on to help them pull things out. We've got uh, the European type of plug. Again, I'll come back to this. Brass from top to bottom. Uh, they've even designed a UK adapter. So that will plug into there. Like that, and then you can close it. And you can use a European plug in a UK fitting. Right. So I said about that though brass from top to bottom okay now where all the plugs are like that here's one that's connected to my transformer i really need to change it it's brass from top to bottom okay there to there and you can shove it in there and it'll work fine but you could also pull it out slightly like that and that brass will be making connection to the fitting behind it and that will be live 240 volts so people thought about that and what they did they put a layer of plastic halfway up so that even if it's halfway out you can't touch the brass plug safety through and through right each one of our pins has got a, a fuse in rated to uh Three amps, five amps, 13 amps. The short story how that came about is uh, just after the Second World War, there was a shortage of copper. Now, people were coming back, there's a bit of a baby boom, houses were being built. I think they even said uh, houses for heroes. Well, they need to have, have enough copper to do, as is general, the rest of the world, a single feed. To a single socket with the fuse at the other end what we decided to do is to do a ring main a ring went all the way around went into one socket come out went into another socket come out went to another socket come out and went back to the fuse box so the electricity could go both ways to do that meant if you plug something in it, it, it was only fused at the box, so they decided to fuse every single item that you plugged into it. Much safer. What else can I tell you about a great British plug? Well, turn them over, you can see that one's got one screw, and that one's got three screws. Okay. One screw, three screws. You turn that one over, those two screws and that actually says cable gland. If you turn that over, those two screws 
what I go into a piece of plastic, which when you screw down, tightens and grips the cables. And a right pain it is too. And if you're doing that lots of time, you've got those extra little effort of tightening these two, two screws up. So they came up with a different method. And it's kind of like a spring, spring plastic, which uh, grips it. That's a similar, similar idea. Two pieces of plastic either side, which grip the, uh, the cable, so you can't pull it out. If it's desired, done properly, like say this one, there's always a little bit more space and lead on the earth wire. So if you yank the cable, you generally want a short piece towards the earth, uh, sorry, short piece towards the live and that is you know it's only held in only a tiny piece of wire about that much, that long it could easily be pulled out followed by that one on a good yank so it will always be the earth which will be the last one to be pulled out so if that would then touch something then the electricity would go through the earth, back to ground. And hopefully not going through you and into the ground and giving you, you know, a shock. Okay, so this video isn't really so much about how much brass I can get out of these. I will do a video in the future about that. Uh, take so many, take a kilogram worth of... Uh, plugs and see how much brass I actually do get out of them. But until then, Ian, in his shed, wishing you all a good day, good night, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are. I'll see you soon.